this time we'll call to order the regular city council meeting for September 12, 2022. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Please let the roll call show that all council members are present. And we'll move on to the approval of minutes, August 22nd, 2022. Council Member Kennedy. I'll move minutes. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Approval of the bills. Any further discussion? Councilman Mosier, go ahead. Um, in the uh, checks to be approved tonight, I have a question about a couple of them from the police department if I can get there. And I, my question isn't necessarily about the dollar amount, it's the process. Uh, there's two checks here, one the Ann Arbor Door State System for $5,245 and one for veteran flooring. For flooring replacements, the uh, five rooms, I'm guessing, at the main uh, department for $7,907. Um, back in July, when the fire department came before us, they had to show three bids for anything over $5,000 for their water softener and their floor drains. And I'm wondering if these invoices went through the same process. Um, I, the big point I want to make about this is really $5,000 is really a very low threshold. That dollar amount, I think, was determined way back when, when $5,000 was a lot of money and you buy a lot of things for $5,000. I, I just feel like it's I, not a waste of time, that's not the right words, but it's counterproductive for every little thing that comes up if we have to bring it to council for approval. And I guess what I'm really wondering, number one, two things. Is that total number for each invoice, is that just one bill? And if it is, was there bids taken for it according to our rules? If it was several bills, then I guess it's not an issue. And I understand that we can't show every little thing on these reports. And, and I know that from experience. But if one department has to go through the trouble, then all, all departments should number one, but the more important part I'm trying to get at is our threshold for these bidding processes. They're much too low. I think that we need to raise that threshold a bit. So I don't know who can answer that question, if it's Patricia or Chief Silva isn't here tonight. I know, I was hoping Chief Silva. Thank you, Patricia. Sorry. No, that's fine. Oh, that no, that's, yep, we appreciate you going over the mic. Thank you, Councilor Peter. Um, so I can tell you that those were individual invoices. They weren't a group of invoices lumped together. Okay. As for the process leading up to the invoice, I don't remember or know that off the top of my head, so that would be something that the department had. I didn't realize Chief Sovic was going to be here this evening. Okay. So I don't know if um, Lieutenant Bagley can speak to those, no. but that's something we can definitely get more information on okay. and get at a later date. Um, that's fine. But, so that I can't speak. Yeah, I didn't see any other invoices like that here other than the normal, you know, DTE is always going to be, yeah. you know, yeah. undoubtedly a lot of money, but. What I can say is that um, those in items were in the budget, so they did go through the budget process. Which is fine, but we time. still, if they go through the budget, they still come to us for approval as. Correct, which is why they're on this report. Right, um, but also. I think the toolkit that we've got coming up that was planned in the budget too, but it's still coming before council. And I don't remember, and I might still have COVID fog, you know, but I don't remember this coming before council for approval. So I don't know if it did or not. I, I didn't go back and look. Yeah, I, I did not either. I didn't have time to research this, so I'm not I'm not certain. Again, the department had would speak better being that. I yeah. just process the invoices that come through from the departments. Um, but one thing to speak on the threshold discussion, I know that in a lot of municipalities, actually I don't know any, I'm sure there are some in our area, but I'm not aware of them that have a threshold as low as ours. 
Um, the average is usually around 25,000. Mm -hmm. Some departments you go up to you know 40, 50,000 before they have to. As long as the items are budgeted, and obviously unbudgeted items would be a totally different discussion. Right. But right. things that have already gone through the budget process and have been approved, um, there there usually is a little bit of a higher threshold, so that there isn't so many items that have to come back for review. Hey, do you know if we've ever asked Client Moran about that? We have. Actually, Paul and I had a discussion with them during this audit process. Um, and they, they agreed um, in their research that I think the average they said was 20,000 20, um, in the municipalities that they work with. But they do know some that go a lot higher, but again, those are larger municipalities. And they were always budgeted items? These are, right? yeah, speaking only of budgeted items. Okay, and through the budgeting process, when they go through and get the bids? Correct. Great, right. okay, gotcha. Okay, that's all I have. Okay. Oh, Lieutenant Baki, if you have anything to say, yeah, yeah. I'm free. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'll talk to uh, Chief Soda, but I'm most positive. Okay. Um, I know that we used them in 2004, and a garage door. Um, he was looking into that process. I did not get to that part. I did some other stuff on when it comes to the budget, but I'll, I'll cut get back with you and make sure that you do it. Okay. Thanks, Lieutenant. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Approval of tonight's agenda. Councilor Kennedy? Approval of the agenda. <coughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> Tonight's consent agenda uh, includes a DDA appointment and a wag this way pup parade. <laughs> Councilmember Kurtzwell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the consent agenda as presented by the mayor. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Councilmember Kibble? I was curious, is the applicant in the building? <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Good question. Um, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. At this time, we'll open the floor for public comment. Please remember to state your name and address and remember our two minute time limit. close the floor for our first public comment and move on to the discussion of downtown with DDA Director Nate Mack. Thanks, Nate. Project a little bit through the mask. Um, good evening, Mayor, Council. Um, so at the, last week the DDA Board met uh, for their September meeting. Um, and during the meeting, uh, a couple of points of discussion came up. The first was um, over the farmer's market. Uh, Diana, our market manager, had suggested or wanted to gauge the interest of the DDA board in starting a winter market. Uh, the market would take place, I believe, starting in December, not, not December, after Thanksgiving, uh, going for a couple of weeks in December, and then picking up going January through May um, until we start the regular market season. Uh, we're going to be meeting with the VFW, I believe, uh, on Wednesday of this week at 7 o'clock to kind of go over some more of those details. Uh, we're still in our, the early stages of this, but it's something we want to look into. Um, Diana does it for the Holly's Farmer's Market as well. So she's got experience doing that, and we're looking to uh, hopefully bring that to self line as well. I wanted to make you all aware of a ribbon cutting tomorrow at Lefty's Cheese Sticks. Um, the corporate office took ownership of that franchise. Uh, the ribbon cutting starts at 4 p.m. The actual ribbon cutting is at 4.30. Uh, the Holiday Spectacular. Uh, we continue to do uh, a good fundraising push for that event. Uh, we've gotten eight sponsors for that event so far, so that's been going well. Uh, we're continuing to plan for that, and we're still seeking out additional sponsors, too. Uh, for the uh, quick RRC update, I've started the self-assessment for that. So once I get that completed, which the deadline for that is September 23rd, the MEDC will create the baseline report to show where we're at uh, in relation to the best practices of the RRC program. 
Once that's completed, uh, it will be presented to the DDA Board, City Council, and Planning Commission. Um, the RCA building, uh, they're continuing to do um, their due diligence. They have their final fire alarm inspection on uh, Wednesday of this week. After that, they'll be doing their final elevator inspection, which I believe is around September 23rd, 22nd, something like that. Uh, so if both of those are completed and they pass, they'll be able to apply for their CFO, which if you probably recall is uh, the deadline for that is September 30th. So um, if I have any updates or any news on that, as far as them not being able to meet that deadline, I'll be sure to let you know. And obviously it would have to be on uh, the agenda for the next council meeting. So, uh, But they're hoping to have a soft opening at the end of October, early November, with the full opening of the restaurant after that. Um, let's see here. We had also at our uh, DEA Economic Vitality Committee meeting on September 1st. Uh, Main Street Open County was there uh, to introduce themselves to the committee, and they also presented us with kind of a snapshot of the Southland Market area. And then at next month's meeting, they're going to work with us to create a mission statement for the Economic Vitality Committee and go through some additional data that they're able to provide. Um, I've already reached out to uh, the individual who purchased the um, bookstore to provide them with that information if they're interested if they're going to be uh, looking to you know, put something in, in that uh, building that they just bought. Uh, with that, uh, that's been my report. I'll take any questions if anyone has any. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to say, first of all, what I, just amazing hire that this our farmers market uh, manager is, and I just really love the idea of um, doing something in the winter months also uh, to bring people downtown. Um, I was just wondering, I didn't hear what you said. Is it going to be a once a month thing or? Um, oh, sorry. Um, it would be every other week. Every other week. Yeah. And you said that she had done it in Holly before, and she said yeah. it was relatively successful, that we actually um, have people down? Yeah, she, so she started it last year. The space that they have holds 30 vendors, and she said they pretty consistently get um, 30 vendors for that. Uh, she's spoken with some of the vendors at the market. She said there's about 20 people interested currently, but the word hasn't really fully gotten out right. yet. So. And I mean, as far as people like knowing to go down there, and you know, sometimes oh, I yeah. think people just go downtown and they're like, oh yeah, there's mm -hmm. markets here. But just, you know, it's, I guess we'll have to have signage and things like yeah, that. So. Yeah, we would, we would definitely uh, do a good job of promoting it to try and, because people, I mean, if you're not driving by and you haven't right. seen it before, then you may not know it's there, so. Well, so I think it's a great idea. Thanks. Thanks. Councilman Ransom? I was curious, um, any word on the, the theater, any movement there at all? Or? So I have spoken with the individual who is um, either looking to help them lease or sell the building, um, and they said that they're interested in either having somebody come in and lease it and run it as a theater, or purchase the building and run it as the theater itself. So um, that's what I've got. I haven't heard anything if they're planning on opening or anything like that. Any, any word or movement on the... Uh, small salon right there down the street from the RCA building? Uh, I haven't heard anything on that. Uh, I've talked to a few people about it, but nothing as far as uh, an offer or anything. Did, did you have a chance to speak with owners of uh, Ten Penny Furniture to see about fixing their... Their little... Thing? Yeah. Yeah, um, I will. I haven't spoken with them yet. Um, but yeah, I'll go with them. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Councilman as well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My question pertains to the clotheslines that are hanging downtown. You probably know them as the extension cord. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any time soon can we get the clotheslines down? Uh, I, I, I know there's always a reason why they're there. Someday we're going to do some renovations and some improvements in the sidewalks. But you know what? I, it's getting a little old uh, looking at the clotheslines. And, um, you know, I've mentioned this before, you know, you just start one block at a time and just get some outlets in there and just start. And you know what? Stuff gets moved around all the time. So if you come in and do some improvements three years from now with a new walkway or whatever, stuff gets moved around all the time. But the clotheslines are, are definitely a topic. And, and it's an yep. easy fix. It's an easy fix. Yep, and we did have a DPW was able to go out and do some of those, um, twist tie some of those, but they haven't been able to fall yet. So, 
Well, I'm talking about removing the clotheslines and running the electrical outlet down at the bottom of the tree and then run your electrical cord uh, around the tree. You know, just do it that way. I mean, when you go into the downtown area yeah. and, and look up into, you know, the second level, it's yeah. all closed lines. Yeah. yeah, we just don't have an outlet at the bottom of the tree. Well, that's what I'm talking about. It's not that big a deal. You know, just do one side of the street this year, next year do another side of the street, just do it step by step so you're not spending a whole lot of money, but at least make an effort because it's it's becoming an issue, I think. Okay. The clothes lines. Yeah. The not electrical cords are being called the clothes lines. Okay. Okay, thank you. That's my Kennedy. So Nate, you said uh, you, you acknowledge the fact that the uh, original founders of Lefties have taken that franchise from the franchisee. Um, have you met them? I have not yet, no. So I'm assuming we haven't had any discussions with them about their lack of uh, adherence to ordinances in the city and how we'd like to see that change going forward, like maintaining the grass, etc. Correct. Okay, so I think it would be worth following. Just pass that information along to Yep, I'll be there tomorrow and I'll, I'll speak to them. Okay. So a couple other things. I see we have a new business in town, the uh, Lavori Rival Hall uh, in front of 12 Kitchen House. What can you tell me about that new business? Yep, so that is um, Oksana. She has the 12 Kitchen House and then the, the bridal store in front of there. Um, and it's, yeah, it's Sidecheck on the website online. They're, they sell bridal attire. So. so who owns it? The same woman that owns the uh, 12, 12 Kitchen, kitchen House? Yeah. Uh, next, as a member of the Pumpkin Fest committee, I've been asked to verify that uh, you are planning to remind the business owners of the Pumpkin Fest event as you committed to during one of the earlier meetings. And if so, when do you plan to do that, and how do you plan to do it? Using flyers, emails, etc., to inform the, uh, just remind the people Pumpkin Fest is taking place, and you're also going to remind them of the fact, like the RCA building, that the uh, air dog thing is taking place in front of their property and so forth. So. What's the plan on rolling that out to the uh, businesses? Um, I will send them an email and provide all the information in the email. Okay, so it's going to go to all the businesses in the DEA, the, this email, or um, because I don't know if you have uh, email yeah. addresses for everybody. I have just about everyone, so. Okay, so for those you don't have emails for, what would be the step you're going to take then? Then I will go to their store and tell them what the best is happening. Okay, you know when you're going to do that, like <laughs> I don't know where I've got a lot of stuff to catch up on. So. Okay. Next thing is, uh, as a member of the Lake Street Cruising Committee, uh, I've been asked to verify that you're going to notify the businesses and residents uh, of the 4.30 start time for the last yes, Lake Street we'll Cruise well. on Wednesday the 28th. You know, certainly don't want the business being blindsided that, that all the cars got to be off the street that, uh, that day in order for the cars to be parked and so forth. Uh, you know, when you plan to advise them of that and again how are you going to notify the businesses and the residents in that area? I will send out another email and let them know. And again you don't have the email you go to the, uh, the site for the businesses. What about the residents or are you going to do that or is the police department going to do that? Pardon me? I, I'm not going to do that. No. So who's going to notify the residents that when they come home from work that night they're not going to have a place to park? Because we've had that problem in the past with those residents on East Lake Street between Wells and Reese. So, yeah, I, I don't know if the police department's making plans for that or not, but, you know, we, we, we've upset those people in the past. We've had it pretty well worked out. It's the to go back the way it was previously. I, I don't know, you want me to go around all day and talk no, about I'm, I'm about just, I'm just asking what the plan is, Nate, is all I'm asking. So, if it's a question of coordinating between the DDA and the police department to advise them, or put a flyer in their mailbox or in their door just so they're aware of the fact that they will not be able to park in their driveway on that day. That's that's all I'm asking to see if that's going to happen. That's okay. Okay? Yep. Thank you. Yep. That's all okay. Councilman Hill. The, uh, the notion of take or trying to grab a project this late in the season to try to get um, lights up and all that kind of stuff, this isn't something that you do on just a whim. This, it, it'll have to end up being engineered. You'll have to find some power point. You'll have to trench out all along the street. 
Uh, I mean, the whole thing is to, to end up, I don't know, I mean, the grandstand in September is um, something that should have taken place in budget. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the issue is is to resolve it. The timetable is yours. Um, I don't recall saying that it needed to be done in September or it needed to be done in October. Um, that's a micromanagement issue, and I think that's inappropriate for city council to micromanage um, uh, uh, staff. I'm not your boss. Um, that's something that that's between you and the city manager. But it would be something nice. I'm just letting you know that that's what's being said. It's not that difficult. I've already had a couple of electricians take a look at it. So it's not as complicated as the gentleman to my far left thinks it is. Um, I think it's just another excuse as to why um, self lining can't be like somebody else. Though so all the other cities seem to have solved this problem um, and have done it very well. Walk to the speaker and self lining where we seem to be a little bit behind the times and some issues. But the timetable for you getting it done, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, just as long as somebody is working on it and understanding that it's an unsightly uh, appearance and it's not the, necessarily the, the best image that you want to give the city. So, and thank you, you're doing a great job. I think you have a difficult job. I think it's tough. Um, but, you know, you got a lot of uh, uh, things that you need to do. Uh, I think we ask a lot of you. So, uh, but keep doing it. You're doing a good job. Thank you. Go Just a quick point of information. I don't think that it's uh, Nate's responsibility to knock on residents' doors. I'm quite sure that the police have handled that in the past, and I'm, I'm sure they're going to do that again I'm, when they when it's their turn. But I don't, I, I don't think that it's yeah. Nate's responsibility. That's right. That's right. And, and that's so I said, if it isn't, if you're not going to do it, then that question will be directed to Lieutenant Bobby behind you. Okay. Yeah. All right, anyone got anything else for Nate tonight? Great. Thanks, Nate. Thanks. Have a great night. We'll move on to the fire chief report with Chief Thorrington. Hey, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, as of today, we've got seven, we ran 744 incidents. The uh, DPW put a ground pad in on our training center, which is really nice. It's going to be it's hugely effective in preventing mud, stuck trucks, and also gives us a place for training for extrication and things like that. Uh, so we appreciate your help on that. Um, we had three bids for three sealed bids came in for our station floors. Um, the five minutes came out of measure, only three bid. Uh, I'm doing reference checks right now. We got the insurance from that company. But the next council meeting will have that. Uh, as far as I roll in the recent ordinance you guys approved, um, at the time they asked how we're going to inform the businesses, our neighboring apartments put stickers on their panels. That was a great idea. So we did the same thing as the stickers made up. Um, fire inspectors in the process now of going to the businesses and putting the panels so the private vendors won't know to contact us. And we recently had um, <coughs> Steve Coffee. Um, I'm going to get a layer to go from EMT fire player to fire engineer. So that's all I have at this time. Great. Anyone got anything for Chief Thornton? I was just saying, I think I like that idea of the mm -hmm. sticker on their body. So I mean, keep them completely aware of what's going on. Yeah, it's got the web page. They should know the Iowa web page, but they don't. The web page on there has our, has our identifier. Well, I, I just wanted to say I, I really appreciate the social media posts uh, the updates of the uh, new truck and the progress that's happening. Uh, it's nice to kind of inform the public and put that out there. So. Sure. They say it's still on track for the fall, but you've seen the pictures. It looks like it's still ways off, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Move on to the police chief report. Filling in for Chief Soda tonight is Lieutenant Bakke. Thanks, Lieutenant. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Council. I got a few things tonight. Um, just want to go over Chief the list Chief uh, Soda did. Uh, he did uh, acquire $900 in grant money for Officer Schneeman's uh, 
training for his leadership training. Um, so we can get that. Uh, we have a truck coming. Again, we might know I've brought this up a couple of times. It's supposed to be coming between the 14th and the 20th uh, this month. So hopefully, uh, with the chip short and everything, that was a problem. And that should be coming real soon. And I'd like to also thank the public for we are now uh, got accredited. And what had happened was is that we had a two-day accreditation process to assessors for the MELAC. And part of that uh, process is um, the public calling in. I think we had seven to eight individuals in the city calling in and giving their um, opinion on our services, how we did, um, how we interact with the community, and they're all positive. And I'd like to, I'd like to thank those people for doing that. Um, we also had to do part of the process was also them going through our station looking at all of our equipment, making sure that everything's uh, on board uh, for the accreditation. Um, and uh, then we had to uh, speak with the mayor. And I appreciate you coming in. Uh, we, had to speak, we had to speak with uh, the city manager. Um, and once that's all done, they grab the information and they uh, make a report. And they've already said that they're going to recommend us for the accredited. Now, that means they're going to take their report and they're going to send it to the, to the commission, the NELAC commission which uh, stands for the Michigan Law Enforcement Accreditation Commission. And that's the MACP, the Michigan Association of Chief of Police. So what happens there is in February, that's when we get the accredited stats. So that's when, that's when we start our next three years on this journey of accreditation. So we gotta make sure that we're keeping up with all of our standards, um, with all of our practices and our training. So uh, I think that's all I got for you. Yeah, oh, and yes, we did get three bits. I didn't for mine. Both boring and on the garage door. Thank you. Yeah. Lieutenant, that's fantastic news. I'm very happy for all of you over there because I know how hard the entire team has been working on that. So. Yeah, it was a process, um, and I appreciate your support in this. A few of the things that we had to get, I know that we're, you know, when you're looking at like new, new cameras, right? So we didn't station cameras anyways. We were able to go ahead and incorporate that, and as part of that, I think we even got a grant money back on that as well. So things like that, some of the upgrades that we needed because it was a, a, the building was getting old, it's, it's roughly 30 years old, so these things need to be done, and it was the perfect timing for getting everything on and we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Anyone got anything from Lieutenant Bakke tonight? Councilor Bill, go ahead. I'd pass along to Sergeant Segerlin. He, I mean, he really brought that thing together, so he was really, really involved. He, he is that person. Yes, yes. person attention to detail. Uh, he came right in the fold, was able to do what he needed to do. He was excellent at what he did, and he was the right guy for the job. So, yeah. so he was right down here and the stick to it you know. Yeah, well, there was plenty of times that came to my office, you just do this. I'm like, hold on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> got other things, but okay. But this is one of these things where yeah. you know, it makes us it makes us where we're accountable to the public, there's transparency, that's the point of this. And we're doing everything with best practices uh, in our jobs. You were really amped up about it. That's a great thing to strive for. So, um, does anyone else, like I said, have anything for the 10 Baki night? Awesome. Thank you for stepping in tonight. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, with that, we will move on to our MERS presentation. Uh, City Manager Zellick, do you want to give us the lowdown on that? Yes, tonight we have uh, Susan Steinberg here from MERS from the Municipal Employees Retirement System. She's going to give us a presentation on the annual, annual actuarial evaluation report as of December 31st, 2021. As you know, the last two years we've held these two meetings uh, where they've given the presentation actually online for Zoom. So this is the first time in several years that actually Susan is able to come here and give the presentation um, before City Council. So, thanks. Thank you. Well, it's nice to see you all in person. It's nice to be out and about again, I have to say. Um, thank you for having me tonight. Just to give you a refresher for anybody that's new, um, I'm Sue Feinberg. I'm the Regional Manager for Southeast Michigan. I've been with MERS for 18 years. Um, so I work with, on the employer side, with the annual valuation, helping you know, cities make changes like you did. I mean, you went through a lot. And we made some changes back in 2018 when we closed the plan and went to the um, kind of the DC hybrid plus plan. So kind of 